Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog, and I am opening this episode because it's not going to be a long episode, so I thought I'd put in just a little bit of filler here. Uh, I'm in my kitchen right now, I'm making some breakfast, and I actually picked up these uh, recently uh, just for fun, Spider-Man waffles. <laughs> I figured, you know what, I could have like a Venom breakfast kind of and, uh, and eat some Spider-Man. I thought they were going to be Spider-Man head-shaped, but I guess they're web-shaped, so I don't know, still works. Uh, but I made my uh, breakfast here. I have uh, chorizo mixed in with eggs and hash browns, uh, and then put a couple of uh, these little waffles on the side of it. And uh, not a very healthy breakfast, but I figured I would just go all out and eat like crap today. <laughs> I'm about to start a new work week. Uh, it's Monday morning, and uh, obviously this video is going to go up immediately, and today we're going to talk about Carnage and his appearance in the New Avengers uh, trade paperback of Volume 1 of New Avengers uh, way back, I think in 2004, 2005. Uh, this was his first appearance in comics after the Venom vs. Carnage miniseries. So after that, we were kind of left wondering what happened to him, what happened to Venom. We'll learn more about what happened to Venom and Eddie Brock very soon. We're going to talk about Venom the Hunger, but in today's episode, we're just going to focus on this new Avenger story called Breakout. So let's get to it. So what we're going to talk about today is New Avengers Breakout, which was the new direction that Marvel decided to take the Avengers in after Avengers Disassembled, which was written by Brian Michael Bendis, who we've talked about numerous times on his channel. And uh, in kind of typical Bendis fashion, whenever he comes on a book, this is when he kind of started this uh, thing that later I noticed became a trend of his, where he comes in and he kind of kicks over everything he sees there um, and then, you know, starts anew. But in this case, he was kind of told to do that in a roundabout way. Avengers books, I guess, weren't selling. I don't know. I never was a big Avengers fan. I was always reading X-Men stuff. Uh, and Grant Morrison had already, you know, done his new X-Men stuff. And I was really locked into a lot of that. But I was also kind of, uh, at this point, you know, re still reading uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. Although I was kind of getting, you know, a little over it. We had passed Carnage and I was kind of, you know, losing interest uh, for the most part. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to give Bendis a chance. He's writing the main Marvel characters now. Let's see what he can do with it. He comes in with Disassembled and he kills like a couple members of the team, uh, Ant-Man, Hawkeye, and Vision in particular. And he had Scarlet Witch kind of have a nerve breakdown and her powers kind of caused all this and uh, reality got kind of shifted and a lot of characters died. Uh, so after Disassembled, the Avengers are no longer around and all the heroes are kind of scattered. Iron Man, Captain America, they're not teaming up anymore. They're just kind of going their own way because they feel responsible of the lives that were lost and the dangers that, you know, people were put in. So they decide not to do this Avenger thing anymore. And so because of that, you know, New York is still being protected by heroes, but they're not as well organized. Uh, and also the world doesn't have the Avengers team looking out for it. And it's kind of a neat time. There's no like civil war, nothing like that. This is just the loss of their teammates caused them to kind of go all, you know, all of them go solo. And so that's kind of what they do in this. And what happens is uh, Reed Richards, he asks uh, their, you know, for uh, uh, Matt Murdock uh, and his partner, Foggy Nelson, at M Nelson and Murdock. He's like, can you guys go down and talk to uh, this guy named Bob? He's at a place called The Raft, and The Raft is this, like, super villain jail out in the middle of the, like, off the shore of New York City. And uh, it's, like, super, like, uh, you know, uh, high tech, and it keeps all these villains in there. And, you know, and there hasn't been really any major escapes in a while. Um, so he's just like, can you go there? Bob is there. And they're like, who's Bob? He goes, well, he was known as the Sentry, and he's, like, this super powerful guy, but apparently he killed his wife. And, uh, you know, with the world in the state that it's in, I, you know, I, I kind of want to reach out to this guy, maybe give him a second chance. You know, maybe we can explore more about what his abilities are, what happened, uh, get the full story. All we know is what he said, which is he killed his wife and he locked himself up in solitary confinement. So can you just go there, reach out to him? And of course, Matt Murray's like, yeah, sure, but I want some help or I want like some bodyguards. So Luke Cage comes along and also Jessica Drew is there um, and she's got like her Spider Woman powers, but she's like an agent at this point. And so they all go to the raft. And then what happens is, Electro um, is paid by somebody to break all the villains out of the raft and cause like mass chaos. And so when he does this at this time, uh, essentially a new team of Avengers forms by coming to the island to deal with the situation. But the main thing I want to focus here, because you're all like, hey, wait, is this an Avengers issue or like episode or what? What are you talking about? Well, the reason I want to bring this uh, episode up or this issue in particular is New Avengers number two. So outside of the main story where, you know, it's the, the Avengers, they're, they're reforming and, they, and it's like Wolverine shows up, Iron Man, Luke Cage, and all of them become the new Avengers. Uh, and that's kind of how the original Avengers kind of came together. It was like a big catastrophe, kind of brought them all together. And then, you know, Hank Pym's like, hey, let's form a team. Um, so that's kind of what was happening here. So 
Bendis was kind of giving a nod to that. But amidst all of that stuff, uh, the main reason that Matt Murdock came to this island uh, with Foggy Nelson and Luke Cage uh, was because of a guy named Bob, who was known as the Sentry. And while they're down there and the power goes out, you know, and, and everyone's freaking out and all these villains are, you know, escaping, uh, Foggy Nelson turns around and notices that one villain that did escape that they didn't even know was there uh, being held at the raft. And I'm wondering, what does Cage look like? Like, how how was he held? Was it electricity, energy shields? Like, what was going on? Uh, but when he turns around, he reveals Cletus Cassidy, a.k.a. Carnage. Uh, so, yeah, this is a full-on Carnage episode. Uh, and Carnage, you know, he just starts beating the crap out of everybody. He's trying to kill them. He goes for Foggy. Matt Murdock jumps in the way, you know, kicks him. And then Luke Cage shows up and he's like trying to stab Luke Cage with his, you know, uh, symbiote nails and stuff and his knives. But of course, Luke Cage has unbreakable skin. So he's like, dude, you guys have to try something else. I got unbreakable skin, man. So they start fighting. So you get to see a Luke Cage and Carnage fight. And the art by David Finch is pretty good. It's a little messy at times. Uh, but overall, like he, I think he really captures the brutality of this situation where it's just all these villains everywhere and they're just grabbing the nearest hero or innocent person and just trying to like kill them and get revenge uh for being you know uh kept at this place for so long so carnage is going to town he's trying to tear everyone apart and luke cage keeps putting himself in harm's way to you know because he knows it's not hurting him uh, but he's trying to you know take the hits for other people because he knows that they'll get skewered instantly uh, by carnage and so matt murdoch pushes foggy nelson into the cell with bob because they found him and he's not even communicating he just he's just sitting there he's not talking to anybody he doesn't want any part of anything and uh, he's not responding to anything they say to him and so foggy's in there like please sir I know you can't hear me or maybe you don't you choose not to hear me but you have to understand my friends are out there they're gonna die that creature's gonna kill them please don't please save them. Like, hey, I, we understand you might have done some bad in your life, but I believe in second chances. Like, pull yourself together. Help my friends. And luckily, Bob listened. And the sentry stands up, goes to the door, rips it off its hinges, and is staring right at Carnage, right before Carnage gets ready to kill a couple people. And Carnage turns around and is like, ooh, a new thing to kill. And he jumps at Bob, and the sentry just grabs him, flies Cletus Cassidy into outer space in the blink of an eye, and once they get to outer space, rips him right in half. So now we have Cletus Cassidy floating in space. Half of him from his, like he, they Darth Mauled him uh, pretty much. His top half of his body goes one way and his legs go another way. And of course, when I first read this, I got mad because I had just finished reading or this was around the time because this came out in 2005. So it was about eight months or nine months after the Venomverse Carnage miniseries that we talked about in the last episode. And this was the last time we kind of saw Carnage in the main Marvel Universe. I think he maybe he popped up in like an annual or one shot or something. But for the most part, this was like the main thing. And so last time we saw him, he had a baby and he gave birth to Toxin. And now he's ripped in half and his legs are going one way and his, his top half's going another. And we're like, what is going on? And I got instantly mad at Bendis again because I'm like, dude, I get it. You don't like symbiotes, but wh like, why did it have to be Carnage that got ripped in half? Like, what the heck, dude? Why couldn't you pick any other villain? Um, it, it, it was just like typical of him to just come in and be like, all right, I don't like to write these characters, so I'm just going to like get rid of them. And uh, and I'm pretty sure he had he did not care what happened to Carnage after that. He was like, you know what? If He's dead. Whatever. I'm going to just kill him. Luckily for us, uh, Zeb Wells uh, and Clayton Crane brought Carnage back later on. So we will definitely talk about those stories in Family Feud and Carnage USA. Those are great books, and we will talk about them uh, you know, as we get there in the continuity. Uh, but for this one, it just felt like typical Bendis, and it kind of upset me. But overall, I liked the book, and I kind of liked a little bit of what he was doing at the beginning of Avengers, and I did respect his overall plan, even though I didn't think it was executed well. Um, so, you know, I have a I have a ebb and flow with Bendis' writing. I, I see potential in the guy, and I know he's really good because I've seen him do really great stuff. But uh, every time he's announced on a new book or every time he gets on a new book, I'm actually more hesitant than excited. Um, and I ha and he kind of has to earn uh, my trust each time because I've seen how bad he is, um, you know, when it comes to respecting characters. He pretty much only respects his continuity and he kind of does his own thing. And uh, and he retcons a lot or, or he just comes in as like, ah, oh, Carnage gone, Ant-Man gone, Hawkeye gone, uh, Vision gone. And he just does it pretty much for shock value and not really with any, you know, anything that nothing feels really earned. I mean, I think Ant-Man died opening the door to like, so, like 
jack of spades knocked on the door and he had like a bomb on him or something and then you know ant-man opened up and then exploded and it was like really ant-man dies opening the door that feels more shock value than like actual like interesting storytelling um and that's just how he handles almost every death in comics so this was certainly a shock and it certainly upset me uh but i was you know happy to find out that they had plans to bring him back and i don't think you know bendis cared about those plans or even thought about him when he wrote this. I think he was just like, eh, I'm just going to kill Carnage now. And then luckily someone else was like, "We, I know how to bring him back. And it's like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> but there is a lot of speculation on what symbiote was actually on Cletus Cassidy when he gets thrown into space. Because remember, right before this, or a couple years before this, was Spider-Man the next chapter. And in that one, Venom ate the Carnage symbiote. Even though it gave him uh, indigestion, he still had it in him when uh, that weird uh, mayor guy uh, took it from him and then like used it, you know, as his plaything and used it to study uh, it and then went after Spider-Man and then discarded it. So as far as we know, I think the the Carnage symbiote was still a part of that that Venom suit, and the Venom suit also now at, at this point still has the uh, clone Venom from the Daniel Way run. So that thing is just full of you know all the babies it had, like it had. Re you know eating them all and then Cletus Cassidy actually got another carnage suit in the uh, negative zone when he went in there and fought like with Blastar and the high evolutionary and all this weird stuff they did in this like Spider-Man annuals I think um so yeah so it was kind of up in the air like which carnage suit it was was it the one from that other universe does it matter and it seemed like it didn't matter I don't think you know Bendis even read those issues probably didn't care and then when they brought him back I don't think Zeb Wells and those guys really cared either all they cared was how can we get him back to life and how can we make it make a little bit of sense and they do the best they can and we'll talk about those stories later on uh, but in this one that's pretty much all I got to say about uh, Breakout overall it, it was pretty good uh, six issues as a non Avenger stand I kind of got into it got a little upset on the carnage thing but it still led to some interesting stories later on and even some interesting stories that were still you know paid off nowadays with the Jerry Conway carnage run that happened not too long ago and then some of the other stuff that's been happening in the comics recently as well so it's it's pretty neat it's definitely something that had long-lasting effect uh, to the character and so for that reason you know looking back on it now I kind of dig it more than I did in the moment uh, but you guys let me know what you think of this uh, you know were you a fan of the Avengers run did you care about the century I think a lot of people uh, pretty much realize he's a MacGuffin and he was just there to you know do the extreme things and luckily later on they killed him and luckily uh, Venom and you know Norman Osborn and the Siege Dark Avengers characters they were there to witness it uh, so it was it was pretty for me it was pretty cool because I'm like oh good they really did nothing interesting with that character after they you know you know brought him back uh, it was a cool concept a guy with you know with a, a, a monster called the void inside of him that made him think he killed his wife or all this stuff Interesting concept, not executed very well, and then he just became a MacGuffin for, oh, we need someone to take down this big bad guy. All right, Sentry did it, and then that was it. So, uh, so yeah, didn't really work for me, but these six issues did, and this Carnage thing, when I look back at it now, kind of worked for me because I like the stories that came out of it. So, again, let me know what you think of all this down below, and I appreciate you guys watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.